the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As there continue to be so many conflicts and changes in our world, as the news remind us every single day of the conflict in Israel and Gaza, as the war continues in Ukraine and Russia, as there is now a security crisis in Haiti, it might be tempting for us to want to have the same superpower that Jesus has during this great celebration of the Ascension. Here in our own midst, we are still in a period of uncertainty and discernment. We still have that beef between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, <laughs> and my own Toronto Maple Leafs once again have failed to make it to the second round of the hockey playoffs. <laughs> in the midst of all of this, it might be very tempting to simply say goodbye, it was great, and simply as Jesus did, lift off, wave goodbye, and move on. And yet, and yet, the Feast of the Ascension is not about Jesus simply fleeing this world. It's not about Jesus escaping to a totally different realm. It is all about Jesus bringing his entire humanity to the heart of God. That is what the ascension is all about. Because the heart of God is heaven. Jesus becomes ever more present to his disciples in order to send the promise from on high, the power of God in a new way, the Holy Spirit. That is the feast we'll celebrate next week at Pentecost. So here we are celebrating the ascension of our Lord. And we have these two stories beautifully read to us from the Acts of the Apostles and from the Gospel of Luke. These two, which are two volumes of the entire comprehensive story of Jesus and the early church. A side note, perhaps a personal invitation for you to spend some time over the next few weeks reading the Acts of the Apostles. 28 chapters, it'll take you an hour and 45 minutes if you read it. Especially, I invite you to spend time with the first 11 chapters and the history of the early church in that era of the sermon of the Apostles Peter and Paul. But let me return to the Feast of the Ascension. Because in the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of Luke, we have this comprehensive story. And here the Ascension is a bridge between the two of them. We have the end of the Gospel story and the beginning of the story of the church and how Christ, after the Ascension, is able to be ever more present to the church. The disciples understood that Jesus, though he was absent, he was ever present to the church because he brought his entire humanity to the heart of God. It might be puzzling and we might be tempting, tempted to believe that when Jesus goes away, he goes to a totally different place, perhaps a solar system light years away. And yet, he goes to a realm that is closer to the heart of God the Father. It is not so much that Jesus goes to a different place that is far away from us, but to a new dimension where he's able to go beyond space and time to be ever closer to us. And he brings all that he is, his humanity, that's what he brings to the Father. And so the ascension for us is an invitation to do the same, to bring our humanity to the Father, to do it on a daily basis, to offer our hearts and our minds and our families, our problems, our joys, our prayers, our works, all that we are and all that we have. To do it in the Eucharist, to do it in our discernment here in our parish, day in and day out. We are invited to offer our lives every single day to the Lord. The first way we do that is by bringing to the Lord our hearts and our minds to praying our emotions. If you pay attention to the Bible, the Bible never shames our primary emotions. Anger, fear, anxiety, loneliness, rage. What we are invited to do is to bring all of that to the Lord, not as we wish them to be, but as they are. 
not in a perfect way, but as we experience them. We are not called to suppress, repress, bottle up our emotions, but simply to let them be before the Lord, to bring all that we have and all that we are. Because if we do not pray out our emotions, these primary emotions will become traits of our personality. And so hurt turns into bitterness, anger into resentment, sadness into self-pity. Anxiety turns into a chronic anxiety that then leads to heartache and pain in our lives. We are called to bring our hearts and our minds as they are to let the Lord transform them, to trust that God will receive them and bless them and transform them. Because we are spiritual beings having a human experience, and so we bring our entire human experience, all that we have and all that we are. And so we say to the Lord on a daily basis, Lord, I give you my life, my children, my marriage, my husband. Not to say, take him, <laughs> but to say, I give you my husband, my wife, my children, my work, this community of faith. Take them, Lord, as they are and transform them, that your name may be glorified and may be praised. And so the first invitation for us to bring our entire humanity to God is the invitation to bring our emotions to the Lord, to pray our emotions so they do not become traits of our personality when we can't pray them. The second invitation is for us to come before the Lord as we do it on a weekly basis here in the Eucharist. At the Eucharistic prayer, we lift up our hearts to the Lord and we offer everything that we have and all that we are to know that sometimes what we expected from life is not what we receive. Often we find disappointment and heartache and loss and grief. And yet what we are invited to do is to bring all of these to the Lord along with our hopes and our joys, what makes us happy, and to say to the Lord, here I bring it, just as you do with this bread and this wine. Transform their Lord. I offer you all that I have and all that I am. Last but not least, we do it as we continue to give ourselves to our families and to this very community of faith. We come to these sacred conversations that we continue in the affinity groups and as we discern the future of our church. To know that at times we might be fearful for what the future may bring, but also reminded that the goal of the spiritual life is for us to become loving persons defined by the person of Christ. And in order for us to become loving people, we need to bring all that we are and all that we have to the Lord, our entire humanity, and not to be fearful. Because often fear is the root of all problems in the spiritual life. So how is Christ, on this Feast of the Ascension, inviting you to bring your entire humanity to the Father? What are you holding back? What are you afraid to give to the Lord? What hurt has turned into bitterness? What moment of anger has turned into not only rage, but especially into pain in your heart? What moment of sadness has turned into self-pity? Where are you suffering because you're not able to let go and to bring all that you have and you are to the Lord? At the end of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, Ignatius gives us a prayer, the sushi pay, which I find is the perfect way for us to do an offertory to the Lord. So as I pray it today, I invite you to bring all that you have and all that you are to the Lord and to continue doing so, especially at the time of the offertory. Bring all that you are and all that you have. Take, Lord, to receive all of my liberty, my memory, understanding, my entire will. All that I have and possess, all that I am, you have given it to me. Dispose of it according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace. That's enough for me. 
Your love and your grace are enough for me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.